back as President Biden heads to Asia for meetings with our allies in South Korea and Japan. Tensions remain high as North Korea threatens nuclear missile tests and Vladimir Putin suggests using nuclear weapons in the war in Ukraine. So tonight, we have an ABC News exclusive with rare access to a U.S. Navy nuclear ballistic missile submarine, part of our efforts to deter potential nuclear threats. ABC's chief global affairs anchor Martha Raddatz recently got a rare glimpse into life aboard a nuclear sub and a look at what the U.S. military does on the seas to try to keep us safe. It is a breathtaking sight that few will ever see. A nuclear-armed ballistic missile submarine 550 feet long surfacing briefly in the Pacific Ocean. With 20 strategic nuclear missiles on board, this submarine is America's most heavily armed warship. I'd say it's the most powerful force in the world right now. Vice Admiral Bill Houston is the commander of U.S. submarine forces, including this ship, the USS Maine. As we approach the massive submarine, he stresses that the mission of the 150 sailors on board is deterrence. We are trying to prevent war with this ship right now, and we're trying to protect U.S. allied and partner interests with this. With the crisis in Ukraine, the ratcheting up of rhetoric from Russia and China, that goal is now being put to the test. When you hear Vladimir Putin and Lavrov and others talk about the possibility of using nuclear weapons, what does that do? on a submarine like this. It's uh, very dangerous. It's really irresponsible. And from a naval officer's standpoint, it's very unprofessional. It gives more meaning to this mission. But we view our mission as a peace mission. It's purely defensive. From the unnerving yet necessary launch simulations to remaining constantly vigilant while on board, it is a mission this tight-knit crew does not take lightly. What are we, day 48, 49, something like that? Something like that, yeah. You lose count, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I really like it, though. Women have only been allowed to serve on submarines since 2010. 22-year-old EMN3 Carla Galindo Gonzalez from Colorado is one of them. Explain why you really like being under sea for that long. So it really takes you away from everything outside. It's easier to keep everything else that's really distracting you from moving forward. ETVC Chief Wendy Shewitt from Nebraska joined the Navy to serve her country and see the world. After spending years working on airplanes, now at sea. Amazingly, there are people who still don't know that women are on submarines. Right. Is that so. challenging? <laughs> it is, but we're simple. I think they try to uh, walk on eggshells around and they just don't know how to react to us. But they're here to work their butt off and couldn't be prouder of the females we have on board right now. It's pretty much a community on it this is. boat too. It's a isn't bunch it? of brothers. <laughs> brothers and sisters yes, now. Finally. The patrols are constant. Those 20 nuclear missiles capable of striking a target from 4,000 miles away. Weapons con, standing by for fire order. Training exercises are a regular part of everyday life on this ship, including simulating a launch. And now we're headed for the missile control center. That's where the missiles would actually be launched from. It is just down from the control center. There we saw two junior officers arrive and open a safe which would contain the key to unfathomable firepower for a simulated exercise. Lieutenant junior grade Aaron Chandler was a French and economics major at Tulane University. Directs a simulated launch of six missiles. She is now the assistant operations officer on the submarine. Lock the key in the safe. Lock, Lock the key in the, in the safe, safe, sir. When you hold that key, even though you're simulating it, do you think how serious a job that is and what could happen? It is pretty crazy, but the gravity of the situation is not ever lost. It is really sobering to think about the implications of what that key actually does. Um, but, I mean, that's why, that's why we're here. That's why we train. But even what passes for a normal day on this submarine is far from it. This is the birthing area where all of the sailors sleep nine to a bunk room. But in between, these are the tubes where the ballistic missiles are stored. That very small shared sleeping space affords almost zero privacy. But privacy is hard to find on this submarine. 
Enlisted sailors eat their meals in this cruise mess. And in the galley, CSS3 James Curtis shows us how to pack breakfast, lunch, and dinner for months at sea. There's a lot of food. There's a lot of food. And how do you keep all that food fresh? The oldest products get used first, and um, so we could maintain the freshness of the food. Um, if we get fresh, uh, we usually burn through that uh, pretty fast. There are no phones, no televisions, only occasional use of email. We're catching up on you know, several months' worth of information that we missed, uh, going home talking to our families. We don't, they know everything that's happened while we're gone. The ship's captain, Commander Darren Gerhardt, says while life on board can be difficult, there are silver linings that keep morale high. Today, a game of cards, cribbage. It's tradition. But almost everyone on this submarine volunteered for this kind of work. And with tensions across the world so high, Admiral Houston tells us this submarine's mission is as crucial as ever. Do you feel like we're in another Cold War? I would say it's a Cold War, but it's a Cold War that we haven't really experienced. In the Cold War, it was the United States and the Soviet Union, and now it's China, Russia, and the United States with China and Russia being near peer adversaries. And how does that change your job? Makes it um, more challenging, but I can tell you the Navy and the submarine force and this crew is ready for that challenge every single day, 365, 24-7. A challenge that will continue unabated. Martha Raditz joins me now. Martha, just remarkable access Remarkable access to that sub, something many Americans never get to see. We should note, though, that missions like this are so classified, there were actually some ground rules for you when you were there. Uh, absolutely. First of all, no one on the crew would tell us exactly where we were. In fact, many of the crew number members don't know exactly where they are, only the people who have to know. But we also had our video checked by the Navy when we left the submarine. They just wanted to check to make sure none of those images revealed anything classified, Phil. All right, Martha, thank you so much. And you can see more of Martha's rare access inside the sub and exclusive reporting on America's nuclear defense this Sunday on This Week. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.